All right, what's going on guys? I hope everybody's out there staying high speed, accomplishing their goals, whatever they may be. You guys know I'm all about having goals and sticking to those goals and doing whatever you can to inch your way towards the accomplishment of those goals. And one of my short term goals that's coming up here in the future, actually within the next couple weeks is Jump Master School. And so I'm pretty much putting every extra moment that I have into studying for the nomenclature exam and also getting ready for the rig X. And I just came home, got home from work, and I was gonna go ahead and practice the rig X a few times, and I figured that might be a good opportunity to take a video for you guys and show you guys how it's done. Because I know for a fact that I am not the only one out there that's getting ready for the rig X and the nomenclature exam for Jumpmaster School. And Jumpmaster for me has always been a goal throughout my career, but for some reason I've just kind of always just not managed to actually get into the school. There have been a couple times where I've showed up to Rig X and nomenclature and actually got through the testing and got through the exam, but my name just wasn't high enough on the list on the OML to actually start the course. But this time I'm being assured that as long as I can pass the nomenclature and the Rig X, that I'm good to go and I'll get my slot. So here I am 16 years later, finally going to Jumpmaster School. And I'm gonna be taking it very seriously. Hopefully I can one and done this thing. All right, so we're gonna get into this. I'm gonna show you the equipment that you're gonna need and the supplies you're gonna to need to actually make this Rig X happen. But before I do that, I just wanna remind you guys real quick to like and subscribe. Don't forget to do that, it really helps the channel and you don't wanna miss any of my future videos. I have a lot of good videos just like this to provide good, useful information to you guys out there. It's not just about Jumpmaster. We talk about all sorts of things on this channel. So don't forget to do that, like and subscribe. All right guys, well, let's see what kind of equipment we're gonna need for this. So first of all, you're gonna need your rucksack and you're gonna want your rucksack filled out pretty nicely. Max will be 35 pounds for the actual test the, the Rig X test and all of your straps, all of your additional webbing here should be taped down with masking tape. So as you can see here, I have all my uh, slack out here, taped down, rolled up and taped down. Nothing's just hanging in the wind. Your adjustable shoulder straps right here should be fully extended when you start this test, okay? So everything's taped up, everything's taped down. The shoulder straps should be completely extended. And you're gonna wanna have your e-tool carrier on the back side of the ruck like it would normally go. And it was advised to me, at least for the purposes of this test, that you just wanna stuff maybe some uh, cold weather gear in there or something like that, some polypro in there, just to fill this out as much as possible because you're gonna wanna make sure that your adjustable cross strap and then your release handle cross strap fit in here nicely and everything's nice and secure. So you want this thing filled out. You're also gonna need your hook pile tape lowering line. It should be completely extended. You're also gonna need your entire harness single point release with all the additional components that are not attached to it, they need to be deattached and ready to go. You need your female portion, um, leg strap release assembly, and your adjustable D-ring attaching strap. You're also gonna need your Mossy, the modular airborne weapons case. Everything should be fully extended with the closing flap opened and the compression straps fully extended. I don't think the nose cone needs to be uh, out. I'm pretty sure that the adjustable nose cone can be in. And then you're gonna need some retainer bands, all right? And you wanna get some like nice new retainer bands. If these things are breaking on you very easily, that means they're old and crusty, you wanna get some newer ones, okay? So you need some retainer bands and you're gonna to wanna to have some spare masking tape. That's all the stuff that you're gonna need in order to successfully do this Rig X. And the Rig X test itself, you have to have all of this completely rigged up to standard within 15 minutes. That includes your ruck, and the Mossy. And they'll give you a dummy rifle to actually stick in with the Mossy. I don't have a dummy rifle myself, but we'll just simulate that for this. I've been practicing for this for a few days now. I'm pretty sure I'm doing everything correctly. I've checked with a few other jump masters to make sure that what I'm doing is right and it's to standard and it would be passing. And so far I'm averaging around 14 minutes. And that's like with some fumbles here and there. Um, but it's passing. So 14 minutes, you know, a whole another minute to spare isn't too bad. But it's definitely something you need to practice and you definitely wanna make sure you're practicing right so you don't mess anything up when it actually comes down to game day. So I'm gonna demonstrate how this is done. We're not gonna do it for time because I wanna make sure everything is done correctly and that you can actually see what I'm doing. But just know that it needs to be done within 15 minutes when you practice this yourself. All right guys, so I've got my lovely assistants to help me out with this real quick just to make sure that you guys can actually get a good visual on what we're about to do here. So we're gonna get started rigging up. All right, so we have our harness single point release completely extended, right? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our uh, release handle through the release handle cross strap. And you can see that there's some hook pile tape in there. You wanna make sure that's lined up nice and straight. 
and then this little center portion goes in between the release handle cables. And then you want to make sure that the release handle lanyard has no twists in it. This will get you if you have this a twist in there. Now once that's done, you want to start off with your adjustable D-ring attaching straps. The snap hook should be facing down, okay? You want to grab your white attaching loop and put it through the triangle length of the adjustable D-ring attaching strap. Then you want to put the green attaching loop through the white one and then the red attaching loop through the green one. Once you have that done, put the red attaching loop through the grommet of the female portion leg strap release assembly and it should look like that. All right, then you wanna do the same thing to the other side. And then also of note, you wanna make sure that with these female portion leg strap release assemblies, you wanna make sure that the uh, release handle cable securement strap, I don't think there's an actual nomenclature for that, is facing upwards because then you're gonna put the release handle cable through the red attaching loop and secure it into that little securement strap there. Just like that. Okay, and once you have all that assembled, next you're gonna to wanna to flip it over so that the snap hooks are now facing upwards. Which makes sense because when you do eventually um, attach this onto your equipment rings, you're gonna use the snap hooks just like this. Okay, so that might help you remember how they should be. All right, then you're going to grab your ruck, and the butt of it will be facing away from you, the bottom of it, and you want to put your e-tool carrier right in the center of the square, right on top of the release handle, all right? So it should fit nice and snug in there. Then you're going to want to grab one of your equipment retainer straps, which is this long strap here. Make sure there's no twist in it whatsoever, and you're going to put it through this top hole on your rucksack. Right here. Make sure there's no twists. Make sure it goes around your adjustable shoulder strap and then underneath it, crossed over, and then it's gonna come through the large hole here. See that? And keep it flush with the actual rucksack itself. Don't get it twisted um, through your waistband here, which I think I neglected to mention before your waistband Depending on the school you're going to, the school I'm going to says that I need to have the, race, the waistband secured and routed through the back side of the frame like this. Okay, so make sure you do that. And when you do put the straps, the uh, straps like this through, make sure you don't go over that waistband. Okay, make sure it stays flush with the rucksack. Do the same thing on the other side. And once you have both straps through, you wanna take the corresponding friction adapter and start routing it through. and pull it about that much. Keep it somewhat loose, and then you want to put a quick release in it. Just like that. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, now you have these two quick releases. You're gonna pull them through the same holes that you put the equipment retainer straps through. And from this angle, you'll pull from the bottom of these quick releases nice and tight. And you want to get it real tight to the point where the friction adapters are coming almost past the plastic of your frame here. Definitely through the holes. And this is something they're going to check to make sure you have it tight enough there should be, you shouldn't be able to fit anything more than a fist underneath. And see, I can barely even get my fist underneath there, so that means that's tight enough. Now you want to adjust these quick releases to about two to three fingers in length, okay? So the best way to do that is just stick your fingers in there and then pull the, the remainder of the strap towards you. That way it keeps friction on it and you don't lose any of the tightness you've already got in there. And there you go, a nice tight three fingers should do. Just like that, now we need to stow the remaining strap. So we're gonna S-fold it. We're gonna grab a retainer band. And we're gonna throw two loops into it. Just like that. Same thing on the other side. 
and that should do. All right, now at this point, we gotta get our hook pile tape lowering line assembled or stowed away so that we can attach it to this. So remember, this is how it is now. It's all fully extended. Now we gotta put it all together so we can actually put it on to this system. The biggest thing to remember is that the edges of the webbing cannot be sticking out of the sides once you have all this put together. So you really gotta, you know, slow is smooth, smooth is fast here. Don't, don't try to rush this part. Just take it easy, make sure you get it right the first time because if you don't get it right the first time, you're just not gonna have enough time to fix yourself. Now, if you're in a Jumpmaster class where you can bring your own um, air items, which I believe that's how it's gonna be for me, I've heard that you can do this <laughs> and then iron in the creases of the line itself. So that way this process is a lot smoother and a lot faster. And you, you know, you're kind of gaming it a little bit. And I'll be honest, I think I might try that. <laughs> and the tighter that you get it, the easier it is to close all this up. All right, this one came out pretty good. It lined up pretty well. Now, if you do have extra line though, um, like it's too long to actually go with the pile here, the hook go to, with the pile, you can just fold it halfway and then pull it back and then hook it up that way. But this one actually came up actually just right. So that's how we're gonna go with it. So you go ahead and attach the hook and pile there. And then you're gonna fold this bad boy up. And that actually came out really good. Now you see how there's no line sticking out from the sides. That's how it should look. They're gonna look for that during your rig X. Now you're gonna to wanna to put this in north to south. I like to put the looped end through the top first because it's just easier um, at the end here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you, you put the loop through the top of your X that you've created, pull it through the bottom like that. Leave the rest of this out on top. So the looped end is now coming out the bottom. Put your ejector snap through the looped end. Actually the entire hook pile tape lowering line should go through the looped end so that you create a knot. Don't pull on this secure portion, just pull on the strap here and get it nice and tight. So you have a nice tight, tight knot right, right there. And then you're gonna need four retainer bands. I know this used to be two retainer bands, but now I think they're calling for four, at least my class is calling for four. So you wanna put them through the openings, the holes in the rucksack frame, just like that. And once you do it that time, you gotta do it again through the other loop of the retainer band. Hopefully that made sense, just like that, okay? So it like extends it. And I think that might be a newer thing nowadays, but that's how I'm being told to do it. I think that's what they're looking for now. Now for that, you're gonna put your hook pile tape lowering line through this retainer band, being careful with your ejector snap so you don't tear the retainer band, okay? Because then you have to do it all over again. So just be careful. Put the whole thing through and put it down towards the lower portion here to secure it against the frame. And you're gonna do one more on the top. And that's how it should be secured. I know that might be different for some of you guys out there, for some of you jump masters, you, know, let, you let me know if that's a new standard. Let us all know if that's like a new thing or it's, maybe it's just something that I'm just not accustomed to. But just today I was told by a jump master that's actually gonna be in the class that I'm in um, as a uh, tester, as a teacher, that that's how, how, what they're gonna be wanting to see and that's what they're gonna wanna see. So. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm tracking. Let, let us know if, if that's wrong or, or whatever. I don't know, let us know. So now all that's done, you wanna flip your ruck over. Now we're gonna secure the, re the remaining portion of the equipment retainer strap that's just hanging out in the wind like this. And to do that, you're gonna put one twist in it, okay? One twist so that the male portion of the leg strap release assembly fits in appropriately with the female portion leg strap release assembly. When I say appropriately, so that it's upwards where that you can pull the slack out like you, th you know, like you think you would, sh like you should. But only one, only one twist, okay? Don't have it all twisted up. And then fold up the slack, throw a retainer band on it. Just like that. Same thing on the other side. Last but not least, don't forget, now we have to make sure that our adjustable shoulder straps and the slack of them is all taken out. 
and we'll have to secure the, the slack on these straps as well. And with this, from what I'm being told, you can use masking tape or retainer bands. I'm gonna use masking tape for this one. Boomski. Rucksack is all rigged up appropriately and to standard. But now we still gotta do our mossy. All right, so remember how we had our mossy laid out? Everything's open. The uh, compression straps are completely released. The closing flap is open. The upper tie down tape is completely loose. No, no ties in it. Everything's, everything's open and unsecured. First thing you're gonna do is take your Mach M4 that you have, your dummy rifle, and you're gonna put it against here to make sure that the adjustable nose cone is actually allowing enough room for the rifle to fit in here. The rifle's gonna be set in here with the grip facing towards you, okay? And the barrel is gonna go down in this way. So just try to imagine that, I don't have a rifle on me. The butt of the rifle is gonna go here in the, in the rifle butt stow pocket, all right? So the butt will go here, and then the barrel will go inside this pocket here. Now before you do anything, and after you adjust your adjustable nose cone to the size that it needs to be, make sure that you come back here past this opening flap here, um, and check that the nose cone securing straps are completely tied down, okay? And then stow the remainder uh, strap underneath. Slide the barrel's rifle down in here, into this pocket here. Put the butt into this rifle butt stow pocket, and then close the flap. Take your slide fastener and tab thong, and bring it all the way up until it reaches the upper spring stop. And you wanna make sure that this slide fastener and tab thong is actually stopped at the upper spring stop here, because once you go past it, it'll undo the fastener and you'll have to start it all over, okay? Plus you'll get a no-go, so keep it there. Secure the tab thong. Now you wanna do your compression straps. Make sure they're nice and tight. And you have to secure the rest of the webbing into the re webbing retainer that's provided for you on the Mall C. All right, everything's nice and secured. Final step is you wanna route your upper tie-down tape. Take the long portion, one side of this is longer than the other, take the longer piece of tape and route it through the tab thong. And then bring it around to the other side and just tie yourself a shoelace knot on the opposite side. And that should do it for the rigging of the Mossy. And that also should do it for the entire rig X. Now remember, you're supposed to be able to do that entire process within 15 minutes, which that might sound a little uh, concerning, but honestly guys, once you practice it a few times, it's really not that bad. You should be able to get it down to 14 or less minutes uh, without, with minimal issues. Now for anybody out there that are watching this, if I did get something wrong, okay, I don't think I did, but if I did get something wrong or I called something by the wrong name, you know, I'm still kind of learning the nomenclature, so I might've called something by the wrong name, um, please let us know. I'm not trying to put wrong information out there. Please let us know because I'm telling you now, you know, this stuff has to be perfect or you're gonna get a no-go during the rig X. And I'm doing my very best to make sure this is perfect. Um, but hey, people make mistakes, mistakes happen. So please, for the sake of me and for the sake of everybody that's watching this, if I did get something wrong, A-okay to correct me in the comments. Actually, I would appreciate it if you did. And if you guys have any other uh, tips or tricks or advice yourself, you know, you've been through Jump Master School or maybe you're a Jump Master instructor, please, by all means, you know, drop that kind of stuff in the comments. It's not only going to help me, I'd very much appreciate it, but it's going to help the entire community. You know, most people that are watching this are either getting ready for an airborne operation or they're trying to get ready for Jump Master School. So the more information, uh, tips, tricks, advice that we have, the better off we're going to be and the more successful we're going to be. So I've still got myself another two weeks to get ready for uh, the Rig X and the nomenclature exam. I'm feeling pretty good, but I'm gonna keep banging away at this every day. Every fleeting moment that I have to put towards the studying of Jump Master School, I'm gonna do it because I gotta take this seriously. And like I said, I, I really do wanna try my best to one and done this. I don't wanna have to keep doing this because even if I do fail Jump Master this time, for some reason I make a mistake, hey man, I'm going again at the next available opportunity, okay? This is a goal of mine, I'm not gonna stop until I get it done. So hopefully that video was good enough where you could see every little minute detail that goes into this Rig X. 
Um, and again, don't forget to like and subscribe. That stuff really does help the channel a lot and you, you don't wanna miss any of my future videos. I am going to continue pushing out good information like this in the future. And I'm gonna to continue to document my experience as I make my way through Jump Master School. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss that. But for now, I think I'm gonna go ahead and run through this Rig X one more time or maybe two more times. So besides that, I've got nothing else for you and I'll see you on the next one.